Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cavalier Roundtable. I am once again joined to my right by Ben Houghton, to my left by Ryan Chabinski. Ben, you are on the baseball team. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on uh, over there at Carroll Field? Um, so we just started conference play uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, we're doing pretty well. Uh, we are currently 7-2. and two. Um, we had a few rough starts, um, but in in most part, seven and two. Uh, we got a tough competition ahead uh, with the Maculata starting tomorrow, and then doubleheader on Saturday. So we'll see how we uh, match up against them. You, you guys played a barn burner of a game against Centenary the other day. I mean, came down to the the top of the ninth inning, a, a one run win. Nice play by Glatz out in right field. The ball took a weird hop off the fence. I think. Everybody, including Glass, was expecting the ball to get past him there in right field. You could tell that he pulled up. He thought about diving as well out there, luckily able to make the play. Uh, Zach Brook coming on the mound, didn't know he could pitch coming out of left field. Uh, pitched pretty well out there. Blake Weinstein also pitching well for the Cavaliers, getting production on the mound. The bats have come alive recently in the season, starting to play well in conference play. And we'll see what they got against Immaculata. That's going to be the real test. The defending Atlantic East Conference champions, the team that took down the Cavaliers last year. Yeah, I mean... They stole two or three from Centenary, so they're doing pretty well so far in the conference. Brian, what has really got them to this point? Uh, what has really got them has got to be the pitching. They're getting good production out of the starters. They're getting good production out of the relievers. Centenary went through, I think, three or four pitchers in one inning the other day. The Cavaliers don't have to do that. They get deep from their starters. You know, the relievers come in, they do well, and they're able to close out the games when they have the lead or they're able to make it up in the end. So I feel like it's been the pitching that's been the difference maker for this Cavaliers team. Ben, would you agree? Yeah, I mean, I think it's all really been clicking. Um, entering the season, uh, pitching and defense was like a huge red flag for the coaches. But, um, I mean, these last few games, our defense has been really well. And for the most part, our pitching as well, as well has been very well for us. Now, would you say the pitching's been a little bit better than the Phillies or a lot better? How, I, how I would think, you compare it? I think a lot is better than the Phillies right now. What are they, 4-9, and nine, losing nah, horrible teams? Horrible teams. Brother. Don't want to talk about that. Yeah, losing they're... to the Reds right now. Listen, Korea's baseball team's doing good. That's all that matters. You know, besides the pitching, you know, what are you guys seeing, like, out of the hitting? You know, how much of an improvement have you seen from last year to this year? Uh, they, they looked more measured at the plate to me. It looks like they're not hacking away. That seemed like what Centenary was doing the other day. They seemed desperate. They were just throwing their bat out there, trying to hit the ball. Cavaliers seem to be waiting on it. You know, they're taking at the right times. They're not chasing balls out of the zone too drastically. Dipper, Brook, you know, they've been delivering. The big hitters for the Cavaliers have been showing up. Glatz has a couple. Ben's got some solid hits out there recently, a couple against Centenary. So... The, the hitting seems to be measured. They seem to be taking it the right times, and it seems like they're a lot more focused when they get to the plate than the teams that they're playing. Yeah, I think uh, the situational hitting, like he's been saying, is really well. Um, we work in practice all the time. Like We have rounds in BP, like working on getting runners over, working on bunch, just all that. So I think the situ situational hitting has been very well. Glatz had a beautiful bunt up the third base line, and he was able to, I believe he reached on first on that one as well, able to advance the runners. He laid it in a perfect spot, he, you know, used his speed to beat him up the line. So Cavaliers definitely seem to be good in terms of the situational hitting. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned earlier, they got Immaculata next. You know, how are you feeling going against them? Do you guys feel ready? Yeah, uh, we'll see what we're facing. Um, we're going up against Jason Hughes. He just, I believe he won Pitcher of the Year last year. Uh, he is an under one ERA right now, so he is very good. Um, but all week we've been working on just like high v low, uh, good. He's got a really good off speed, so I, I think we'll match up well against him. Uh, I think this Cavaliers team has a good shot. I mean, going on the road this weekend, or no, they're at home this weekend. Excuse me, playing their first two games. Uh, they go on the road tomorrow, I believe, to play Immaculata there. It'll be interesting to see what they have on the road to start because they've been a much better team at home than they have been on the road. So I think the tone that they set on the road tomorrow will carry over into the weekend. Yeah, so I mean, you were bringing up good pitching. And one of the things with good pitching is the softball team. You know, Eva Burns throwing yet another no-hitter in her career. You know, some or this weekend they go up against the number one team in the nation in softball. How do you guys feel about uh, the softball team going forward? Yeah, I would like to see how Avery does. Um, I mean, we talked about earlier a few weeks ago. She, she got off to a slow start, but I mean, her last four, uh, her last four outings, she's gotten a win um, with ten, over 10 strikeouts and two of them and eight in the other. So it's really good to see her turn around. I'm excited to see what she does against Salisbury. 
I, I think a player that goes underrated for this Cavaliers team is Daphne Santos inside the inside the circle. I mean, she's got the lowest DRA at a 2.4 for this Cavaliers team. She's been pitching lights out when she put her in the game. You know, it's a nice dual threat to have if you're the Cavaliers to play Burns to start, or if you're playing a doubleheader like they are tomorrow, they can start Burns and they can start Daphne in different games. So it should be a, a good combo for this Cavaliers team, and I think that they're going to be dangerous, and I, I think they could give this Salisbury team a shock. You know, what do you think they really need to put emphasis on in practice this week as they got ready to go up against the Seagulls? I, I think it's just got to be seeing a top team. I mean, uh, the difference between playing a conference opponent in the Atlantic East and playing the number one team in the nation are two very different things. You can really see the difference. I mean, you could see it light, night, excuse me, night and day when Tufts came in here to play our men's lacrosse team, num- now currently number one ranked team in the country. That team was on a different level than this Cavaliers team, who's, I think, 18th in the country. So, you know, you can really see the difference. They execute well. You can see the pace of play that they play with. It just seems like everything is more precise with these top teams. So you got to be working on being more compact, being more tight, playing the game that you want to play, being more situationally aware as compared than you would be going into an Atlantic East Conference game. Yeah, I think to build off what he said, um, I mean, definitely, I don't think it would really hurt their ego if they lost by a ton. I'm sure going up against the number one team, they're not expecting much. But I think they're in conference play, but also leading into conference play, I think it can also be a huge ego boost. Like if, if they win or only lose by a few runs or play well or do something like that, like I think it can be a really good game to have during conference play. Now, being an athlete yourself, um, you know, you're not always going against top teams, but you know going into the game that you are going up against top team. How do you get yourself in the right mental state for that? You just know that they're there. They, those coaches think they're better than you. Those kids think they're better than you, and you don't want to do anything but beat them and, and to put runs up and, like, even win. Like, it's just such a good feeling. Yeah, you, sometimes you can feel during warm-ups that those kids don't think that they should be on the same field as you. They don't think it's worth playing with you. So you can, you can definitely feel that energy, and you want to beat that team. That's all you want. It doesn't matter. Conference championship, nothing matters at that point. The only thing that matters is beating that top-ranked team and seeing that next to your record. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for this week on the Cavalier Roundtable. Make sure you tune in. We got men's baseball. We got softball. We got all the sports here at Cabrini. So we'll catch you next week.